はい I'm 14 years old I'm walking down the street when suddenly my mom in the car vroom, drives up beside me and throws open the passenger door Get in! She screams I put one foot in the car when suddenly she floors it Flying through the air, I'm thrown from the car and I roll onto the grass on the side of the road. She slams on the brakes, more upset about the waste of time than the fact that I might be possibly injured. This time I get up and I hop in the car to make sure that both feet are in before closing the door and she takes off again. We're racing down the road because we're late for an orthodontist appointment. I had completely forgotten. I had been reading a book as I was walking home, and that made me very, very late. That was why she was so angry. As she was tearing around back and forth, I could feel her anger and frustration, and possibly her worry, because I did fall, mixing together, and suddenly she just screamed, What kind of idiot are you? I didn't know you had a choice. <laughs> she suddenly just burst out laughing. I had diffused her madness with a little joke. I felt like I had done a magic trick. Or I had a superpower. Oh, yes, I had become Quip Man. Ah, I could use this power wherever and whenever I needed to. If there was a bully trying to bother me, I would cut them down with a well aimed jest. A teacher coming towards me, I would distract her with a funny little story. If my sister was upset, I would distract her with a silly voice. <laughs> oh, I could take my newfound powers and take them around the world, disarming villains with a silly pratfall. Or, 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 or comforting, comforting a victim with a witty anecdote. Quip man. In a world where anger, depression, and anxiety was vanquished through laughter. Now more than ever, we need to laugh. Because if we didn't laugh, we would cry. Uh, there are riots and protests happening everywhere. Greed and corruption seems out of control. Right? We, and people are taking themselves so seriously. There are so many people we see on social media all the time, and they are screaming at each other and threatening each other. We all take ourselves way too seriously. Well, not all of us, not the people in this room. Those other people. I blame Facebook. Every time you open Facebook, it asks, What's on your mind? So we have been conditioned to believe that everyone needs to know what's on our mind. I have an opinion, and my opinion is right. And that's not only enough for me to know it's right, you need to know it's right as well. That leads to arguments. That leads to disagreements. And that leads to unfriending. This divisiveness, this anger is spilling into the workplace. We are all filled with so much anxiety. We are all overthinking. Right? When the unthinkable is happening, it is not a time to be overthinking. Conspiracy theories are out of control. And in the workplace, happiness has gone down. There was a study done, and in 2017, 51% of the people said, I'm pretty happy at work. That number dropped in 2019 to 41%. Anyone want to guess what it's going to be for 2020? Yeah? Zero? Zero percent? <laughs> Everyone's miserable. <laughs> no, it's going to be 80% of the people are happy. No, I don't know. I'm making it up. We don't have the stats. 2020 is not over. We're still just getting over the murder hornet. The people who work in customer service, I'm sure, are even more miserable right now. And I mean, I used to work in customer service. I loved customer service. It was the people I couldn't stand. 
And we've all been in a restaurant where we have been served by a sullen or angry server. Right? You can always tell when the manager of that restaurant is a real jerk because it boils down onto the staff and then onto your dinner plate. Laughter is so important. Can you imagine if those managers at those restaurants used laughter to try to re-engage and refocus and re-energize their staff so they could go out into the workplace and face the people? Laughter is so powerful. It releases uh, uh, endorphins that present uh, 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 a sense of well-being. It's a natural antidepressant. It increases our T-cell count. It activates them to help us fight disease and viruses. It increases memory retention by decreasing the stress hormone Cortisol. It increases productivity. Happy people work harder and work longer. It promotes friendship and team building. There are studies that show that conversations that have laughter in them go even longer than conversations that are quite dry or even depressing. And jokes, jokes actually activate the brain. When someone is telling you a joke, your brain kicks into high gear trying to figure out the twist or the punchline before they get there. Our frontal lobe examines what's being given to it, and then if it finds the joke funny, it sends an electrical wave to the cerebral cortex. <laughs> Just because of a joke. One of the other things that's kind of interesting is that we are socially conditioned to suppress our emotions, right? We, we try to hold them back, many of us, not all of us, not the people here. We swallow our tears, or if we're feeling angry, we might, we might go, mm. or if we're startled, we go, Hah. so we're building up all this negative energy in our gut. But when we laugh, when we have a breathy, full laugh, when we have a belly laugh, we are actually scooping that negativity out <laughs> and releasing it. That's why sometimes when we're laughing, we start to cry. Because <laughs> we're letting go of all that negative energy that we were holding in. Wait a minute. I have seen some people telling jokes about other people and it enrages them. Well, that's right. Not only is humor subjective, it could also be destructive. Good laughter should be used for good, but there is evil laughter, and we should learn the difference. I have seen laughter change people's lives. I have a lot of stories, but I'm going to tell you one about a guy named Brian. Now, this story starts with a crash. Well, that was underwhelming. <laughs> so, me and two friends were at Camp Good Times. Now, Camp Good Times is a, a camp for teens with cancer. And we were going there to teach an improv comedy workshop. I teach comedy workshops uh, for charities. I also teach them for corporations but I love doing the charity one. And the crash happened in the middle of a cafeteria. Well, not a cafeteria, the cafeteria. And what had happened was Brian had dropped his tray. We looked over and he was clutching his hands to his chest like this and moaning and rocking back and forth. Two attendants that were with him were calming him down, alternating touch with, with touch, trying to calm him down while another one was picking up his tray. The kids in the cafeteria, who had all looked to see what the crash was, all immediately went back to just talking and goofing around with their friends. The counselor who was with us 
explained that the kids weren't being rude, the kids weren't being uh, bad. It was just that Brian, well, Brian had brain cancer. And so that meant that he had cognitive delays and broad spectrum seizure disorder, which made talking with him or engaging with him challenging. So the kids were mostly passingly polite to him, and he spent most of his time at the camp with his attendants. We went and taught our workshops. We split them off into three groups, and we were teaching them all about uh, improv comedy. Now, one of the big things about improv comedy is, is the rule, yes and. Yes and means whatever you say or whatever you do, I'm going to agree with it, I'm going to accept it, and I'm going to add to it. The result is, if you follow the yes and rule, you can build incredible stories, incredible sketches that are often quite surprising. So we were teaching these workshops and Brian was sitting in the back of the room uh, watching us. Then we gathered all the groups together and we did presentations for each other about what we had learned. Well, what they had learned, but I'm always learning. <laughs> As they were doing the different little comedy sketches, they were about to start one when Brian suddenly jumped up and stepped in. The other kids just yes anded him, and they did this hilarious sketch about a broken toaster or something, and Brian was quite magnificently hilarious. As we drove home from the camp, we were beaming with what we had experienced with Brian. And the next day, that counselor called me on the phone and said, after we left, Brian continued to goof around and even be a little bit mischievous. She was really, really happy, effusive even. Wait a minute. You said that jokes can hurt. I've seen them hurt. What do you have to say about that? There's laughter that hurts. Laughter that I don't like. True. Like I said at the beginning, there are many different kinds of laughter. We all know the laugh from The Simpsons, that TV show. <laughs> right? That kind of laugh, that kind of mocking laugh, is one that we don't enjoy. That's because jokes can sometimes be cruel. Judy Carter wrote a book called The Comedy Bible, and she said that the premise of all jokes was based on four principles. You know what's weird. You know what's stupid. You know what's hard. You know what's scary? So you can see those are all kind of negative, right? And when you're making jokes that are about ridiculing people or making fun of people, then you can hurt people. A good rule of thumb is if you're telling a joke or trying to provoke laughter and you feel good, there's a very good chance someone else is feeling bad. You should only be trying to provoke laughter or telling jokes to make other people feel good. Another rule of thumb is don't punch down. This is one of the big changes that we have in the 21st century. Don't make fun of marginalized or lower status uh, people. This is also one of the reasons why TV shows and movies that when we were kids we thought were hilarious we watch now and we go, hmm, this is problematic. Because society has changed, tastes have changed, and what we find acceptable is no longer always acceptable. So always be careful when you're about to show someone, oh, you should watch this, this was really funny. Because you might suddenly go, oh dear. Punching up, however, punching up is okay to a degree. Because you're making fun of the powerful, the high status, the arrogant pointing out their foibles or their mistakes. That can be kind of funny. And they can take it. They're powerful. It's best, I think, if you're not confused. If you're trying to provoke laughter 
or, you know, tell a joke. Follow what I call the GLAD rule. GLAD. Great, laugh, avoid, demeaning. Now, there's many ways that you can do that, right? You can, uh, comedy's all about surprise, right? You can juxtapose stuff. Games like Mad Libs are very funny because it's uh, ridiculous. You can be very silly. You could tell dad jokes. Now, I'm not saying you have to tell dad jokes. I'm not saying well, all comedy now must be dad jokes, but they could be pretty funny. One of my favorite ones right now is, why did the teacher have crossed eyes? Because she couldn't control her pupils. These are pretty funny. <laughs> you want to make people feel good. Here are three examples of work, three, count them, three examples of workplaces that have used humor for good. There is a department of motor vehicles that in their waiting room shows episodes of faulty towers so that the people waiting to renew their license or pay their fines are giggling as they step up to the counter. Oh, that's basil faulty. Coffee shops have memes or single panel comics for the people waiting in line who are jonesing for their caffeine fix. And many people know how WestJet used to have all of their flight attendants uh, do funny safety announcements, making jokes and telling little silly stories, which helped alleviate the stress of the people who were having a little bit of anxiety about flying. Do you see how all three of those examples is about making other people feel good? It's a little self-serving because you're making them feel good so that you feel good, but still, it's making them feel good. But wait, there's more. The human brain responds to big emotion, right? That's why we remember highly emotional events. And that's because the amygdala, which processes strong emotions, is right next to the hippocampus, which is part of the memory center. So, if you want to make yourself more memorable or your business more memorable, you need to connect it to an emotion. And the best emotion is joy. And one of the signs of joy, laughter. We all have friends who make us laugh, make us laugh out loud. We need to surround ourselves with those people. We need to become those people to help re-energize and reinvigorate people. There are measurable effects to the power of laughter, and we can't leave it up to chance. We need to make more space for it. It can't just happen randomly. We need to treat it with the same seriousness as, as going to the gym or eating food or making love. We need to find more laughter. So my challenge to you is for the next three days, find an opportunity to laugh at yourself particularly if you make a mistake or do something wrong, just as you're about to go, darn it, instead go, <laughs> your body can't tell if you're faking it. Your mind can't tell either. Just laugh at yourself. Don't take yourself so seriously. If you want, when you wake up, as you're brushing your teeth, look at how ridiculous you look with the toothbrush in your mouth. <laughs> Include a humorous anecdote at a business meeting or at a work meeting. Seek out stories and jokes that go, hey, I want to share this before we start our meeting, I want to share this. And ask colleagues, people at work, how you can make your workplace more humorous. Now, there is one type of laugh that I forgot to mention that we didn't address yet, which is this one. <laughs> the evil scientist, right? And when they make a discovery. So I want to help you make a discovery because it's something I discovered a little while ago. What I'd like everyone here to do and you at home to do is just first relax and then lift your eyebrows, raise them up. Look at other people raising their eyebrows. <laughs> My friend Lori, when she does this, she starts laughing immediately. Do you see how it changes your whole face? If you add a smile to that as well. <laughs> right? 
your, your brain starts thinking that it's happy. <laughs> so when you have dark thoughts entering your head, lift your eyebrows, open your mouth, smile. You might trick yourself into having a good time. <laughs> and remember to laugh as much as possible. And if when you're doing this, if some evil person comes up to you and says, what kind of fool are you? You can answer, well, what kind were you looking for? <laughs> My name is David C. Jones, and I hope I have been somewhat of service. Thank you very much.